What's up YouTube? I've got another full walkthrough video today of how I made this rust poster design. It's got loads of textures and loads of detail, so make sure to stick around right until the end to see every step. Now let's jump in. This is the original poster file that I've made, so I'm going to be using this as a reference to work back from. So the first step is going to be creating a new canvas, which is going to be file new, and I'm going to use 3840 by 4800 pixels. Make sure that you've got 300 resolution here. You can set your background color as white. Now with the new document made, I'm just going to work on the text straight away. Now the best thing about this effect is the fact that this text is still live. So I can change this to anything I want and it will still have all of the textures and effects applied. You can see that because it's a little bit shorter, it cuts off, but we can adjust that. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in the word Rust. Now the typeface I'm using is Scotch Display Condensed Medium and it's at about 132 points. I also increased the tracking to make sure that we can still see each letter. So if it was at zero, you can see that once the effect starts to spread, all the letters will collapse together and you won't be able to read them. So the first thing we're gonna do is group this. So I'm gonna use Command G to put this text layer in a group. Now I'm gonna apply the effects to the group rather than the text layer so that it can still be editable and we can come back and change it. So I'm just gonna name this text. Now the basis of this effect is adding drop shadows and then you can duplicate those drop shadows and it will create this really wide spread that looks like it's ink bleeding. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just add one drop shadow here. Now I'm gonna set the size at around six, between six and 10. Now all you're gonna do is without the distance and the spread on, you're just gonna keep this at opacity 100. And now I'm just gonna duplicate this and increase it each time. Now this is kind of the base for a lot of grunge effects with text. So once I've typed in six, I'm just gonna press this plus here to duplicate it, come down, double it. I'm just gonna keep repeating the same step until I maybe do that six times. Now, once I'm at near 200 pixels, we can stop there and we can just press okay. And you can see already it's just these widespread of drop shadows and this is gonna create this really nice ink bleeding grunge effect that you can layer over. So with these effects applied, I'm just gonna collapse these by clicking the arrow. And now I'm gonna set this into a new group as well. So I'm gonna command G on this. Okay, now with this new group made, I'm just gonna rename this to effects as this is where we're gonna be placing the gradient map and the texture layers. So the first step I'm gonna do now is within this folder, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer, which is gonna be a gradient map. And now you can see already just from adding in this kind of inversion, this white text becomes a bit more of a glow effect. So you can see just by changing the colors, it creates a whole new effect for you. But what we're gonna be looking for here is we want a black to white with a tertiary color in the middle. So I'm gonna select, let's say this kind of blue texture here. Now I'm gonna make sure that we've got a dark gray, if not black at one end. I'm gonna set it to about there. We're gonna set the other end to a bit more of a solid white. Make sure that it's right on a hundred location. You know, I'm gonna say about here. And now I'm just gonna drag out these other colors. You wanna put your middle color, which is gonna be the actual color. So I'm gonna set this as blue, set this to around 50 on your location. And I'm gonna set this to be a bit of like a pale blue, maybe around about there. And there you go. Now with this selected, just gonna hit okay. Now we need to assure that every texture layer we add is gonna be put under the gradient map so that it blends in together. So to do that, I'm just gonna select this text folder and I'm gonna drag in the texture. Now I have this folder of textures I'm gonna be using. The majority of these are free. I've got them from Texture Fabric Online. If you just Google Texture Fabric Photocopy, you get so many options and they're really high quality as well, which is great. The more kind of detail within these textures, the better the effect's gonna be. So you can see these kind of like watery decay ones are definitely the most detailed for effects, but you can see they're all kind of just photo scan. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna add is gonna be this photocopy texture here. So I'm just gonna drag this in. Now you can see it's good. We've already got this under the gradient map. Now I'm just gonna shrink this down to about the size of the text so that there's kind of like the most detail possible in there. And I'm gonna set the layer mode to overlay. Now to start with, you're gonna notice this makes it very dark. So what we're gonna do is adjust the levels on the texture to make it a bit more of a gray so that we can see a bit more of the detail. So with the texture layer selected, if you hit Command and L, it opens up the levels tab for this layer. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this center slider up towards the left and you're gonna see how much lighter the balance gets. Now I don't want this fully light like here and I don't want it fully dark here. So I'm just gonna drag it kind of in the middle to the point where enough detail shows through, but you can still read it. So I'm gonna say about there is fine. Then I'm gonna hit okay. And now effectively how this works is you're gonna keep layering these textures with different layer modes and you're gonna see how much detail starts shining through. So I'm just gonna add in another texture layer here. I'm gonna add this texture fabric. Now you don't want all of the layer modes on overlay because you'll see it will just become very dark and kind of undetailed. You want a lot of contrast between the light and the dark areas. So for example, I'm gonna drag this under the gradient map, set this one to screen. You can see already the kind of like the light area shining over, gives it a bit more depth. So again, just gonna adjust the placement of that. Maybe set it to about there. 
But yeah, a lot of this is just trial and error. You wanna play around with it how you want. You don't have to use screen. You can cycle through layer modes and you can see what works. I think I actually prefer lighter color here, so I'm gonna put it on that. Just shrink this a bit and I say about there is good for me. Okay, now moving on to the next texture. Come back to the folder. Now I'm gonna add in this detailed texture here. Again, make sure it's under the gradient map. Now I'm just gonna cycle through layer modes to start with and we can see what kind of effect it creates. You can see with these heavier detailed textures that there's a lot more coming through. So we just wanna balance it out so that we can still see the rest. So I'm gonna set it to linear dodge here, but what I'm gonna do is uh, add a layer mask and I'm gonna use Command I to invert it to black so that we hide all of it. Now with a brush, you can open up a white brush. So you see here, I've got my foreground and background colors. I'm just gonna press X to swap these over so that white's in the foreground. And now I can just use this brush to paint in areas where I'd like it. I'm just gonna make it slightly bigger, add a little bit here, maybe paint in some up in this corner down there. And you can see the amount of kind of options that you can come up with from here. This is all trial and error to balance it how you want it. So if I paint in more up there, you can see it's a bit more covered. There we go, I think I'm gonna be okay with that. And now if I hide that layer, you can see how much of a difference that one's made. Even with this masking complete, you can always come back to layer modes, try and test it how you want. Again, remember you have your levels tab as well. So if I use Command L on this and I change the levels, again, that alters the effect as well. You can drag this end one in and the middle one to the left to create more of a contrast between them, which I quite like. So I'm just gonna decrease this a little bit, drag that back. And there you go, just play around with this and you can get so many opportunities. And there we go, I think the detail on that is great. And this isn't gonna be exactly the same as the one I made the first time around, but you can see, really liking this effect so far. And I think I'm gonna move on to the rest. Okay, now coming back to the original poster file, you can see I've still got a little bit more text to add here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the best thing about this effect is that it's still live. So I can change this text to anything I want and all of the textures will still be applied. So now all I need to do to actually add this text in with the effects applied is simply just type it within this folder. So I'm just gonna type in corrosion, which is my first word. And then simply, I'm just gonna decrease this in size and just drag it under the textures. Now these textures will just need to adjust so that they still show the effect on this text as well. But also you can see, as I mentioned earlier about the tracking, it's a bit harder to read. So I'm just gonna increase the tracking on this. There we go, maybe go over around 16 and I'm just gonna tilt this slightly. Now, within this subtitle, I'm just gonna duplicate this, change this text to within, just like the reference, and I can just mess around with placement. I'm not gonna go for exactly the same. I think what I actually did was decrease the weight here. So I'm just gonna select these both, bring this down to Roman, maybe even light. I'll go to Roman. And there we go, it's already resembling the initial piece. And now to create this, it's equally as simple. It's literally just text, but so small that you can't read it, but it creates this really nice line effect, which works so well with the ink bleed. So all I'm gonna do is create a text box and with Lorem Ipsum already pasted in, I am just gonna decrease the size to maybe two pixels and change this paragraph. Now I can just keep pasting this. And I believe what I did is I used the tab key to kind of create these indentations. If I show you on the reference, you can see the start of the lines don't start at the same place and there's gaps. So I'm just gonna use the tab key to create these. I'll do the same thing on this line, just take some letters out, and there we go. So now with this text layer made, let me just drag this into the folder, just drag it into the text here as well, and I'm just gonna change the weight down to light and increase the leading here. There we go, I think that's about the same as the original. If I just show you as a reference, if I zoom out here, the overall the scale is bigger, which we're just gonna adjust, but yeah, that's fine. Now I'm just gonna duplicate this layer, place this where I want it, Command J to duplicate, turn this a bit, and just repeat the same step again. I'm just gonna adjust the lead in, I mean adjust the uh, indents, and already you can see it just looks slightly different. I'm just gonna tilt that slightly less. And now the only thing we need to do in here is adjust the texture placement. So with this text folder collapse, I'm just gonna grab these texture layers, and I'm gonna, because this is already masked, I'm gonna uncheck this, and I'm gonna select this layer so that the placement is still the same. Just drag this in. And you can see already just from moving the texture layers around, you can create some even more interesting effects on your main text. Let me just undo that, drag it slightly below. And now with these masks, you can repeat the same steps. You can just come back onto the mask. I can hide some, hide some areas here with the black brush, reveal some areas with the white brush, and you can adjust it however you like it. Now it's the same with these textures. I'm just gonna add a mask here. Now I'm gonna reveal the area here hide there, repeat the same step. And I think I'm happy with that how it is. So now I'm just gonna grab this effects folder, command T and I'm just gonna increase this in size. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that this layer mask is back checked again so that it remains scaled. So I'm gonna tilt that and drag that just to about the placement it is on the main poster. And there we go. 
Okay, now we're just gonna move on to the image and the remaining assets. Okay, now moving back to this original as a reference, you can see the main image now is this angel figure, which is what I'm gonna be adding in next. Now, the base for this is the same as the text, where you apply the effects in the same way, and you just layer these texture layers over the top and then just do some masking to blend it all together. So I'm gonna come over to this folder I have, and I'm just gonna drag in this angel image here. Okay, now with this, I want to mask it, but I don't want it so sharp where I just select and then subject and it's completely outlined. I kind of want a little bit of this area feathered around the outline so that there's a bit more detail. So to start with, I'm just gonna use that select subject and mask it here. But what I'm gonna do is get a white brush and I'm gonna slowly brush around the outside. Now, this is similar to replicating the text effect where there's loads of drop shadows. It kind of creates this uh, kind of creates this bleeding background behind the image, which works really well with gradient maps. So I'm gonna keep brushing this out and out and out. I'm gonna do it the whole way around the image. And then I'm just gonna adjust the scale. You can see here the edge of the image has been hit, so I'm just gonna blend that. Okay, now let me just move it to the placement. So I'm gonna say about there is right. Okay, now with this angel image masked, what we're gonna do is we need to apply the color that's the same as the text onto the image as well. So I'm gonna go into this effects folder and I'm gonna drag this gradient map layer we created to start with just above the angel image. Now you can see this is a lot more of a kind of uh, huey blue compared to this original image. So I'm just gonna adjust the colors. So let me just double click on the gradient icon and I'm gonna bring this to a lot more of a kind of gray blue. I'm gonna say about, about here is good for the moment. Make it a little bit lighter there. And I'm just gonna hit okay on that. Okay, now with these next texture layers we're gonna add, it's gonna be the same kind of process as the text. We're gonna add them underneath the gradient map, but because we're applying across the whole canvas, we need to make them a lot bigger. So I'm gonna come into this folder here of textures and I'm just gonna start adding in some more. Now I'm gonna start with a more detailed one as the base. So for example, this one we used earlier, I'm gonna reapply. So this is a very detailed one, which is great for this kind of effect. So I'm gonna scale this up, make sure that it's under the gradient map. And then what you can do is just scroll through blending modes and you're gonna see what kind of options pop up for you. See, now I kinda of like linear light because it looks a little bit leery right now, but it's also applying across the background. So I'm gonna select this, maybe turn the opacity down to 50. And what I'm also gonna do is adjust the levels. So if I use Command L, it's gonna move this over so I can see it. I'm just gonna drag these levels in. You can see now if I just reduce these whites and I drag this mid slider, the kind of effect level that is applied. So now it's still very full. So I'm just gonna come off this and turn the opacity down a bit more, maybe into 30. And then I'm gonna hit the mask and I'm gonna press Command I to invert. So a good method of applying these textures is to kind of get the level you want, then mask it, and then paint in the actual areas that you want applied. So you can see here as I just bring in this brush, I can kind of just apply this wherever I like it. A good tip for this is to use texture brushes if you have any. You can kind of get these splats and it creates a bit more of a detailed look. But for example, let me just paint in some areas and I'm gonna leave some uncovered. There we go, just use X to swap between your black and your white brushes. Just makes this brushing very easy. And I think for the moment that's good for this texture, so I'm just gonna add in one more. So I'm just gonna add in this same texture layer that we added earlier and I'm gonna scale this up to the whole size of the page. Let me drag this underneath the gradient map. So for this layer, I think I'm gonna change the blending mode to one of the negative options, so like divide, subtract, exclusion, and difference. Uh, because it's quite directional, it's got this really kind of distinct layer here. I may adjust the size. So I kind of like this effect down at the bottom, but the kind of angle up the side is a little bit less appealing. So I might increase the size to about here and then just play with the opacity on this one. I think I might set that to about 40, which is good. And then I think this line's a little bit two presents, so I'm just gonna drag that out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the same step, mask that, get my black brush, and I'm just gonna paint the rest of this line out as I kinda just like it, this bottom area. Okay, now with that texture done, I'm just gonna add in another. Got this kinda nice overlay photocopy texture, let me drag this in. I'm gonna scale this up and repeat the same steps, just drag this under the gradient map. So I'm kinda liking these photocopy, this kinda solid gray texture's coming in really well. You can see how much of an effect it has on the text, specifically. I think I'm gonna set this one on screen now this looks very bright to start with, but what I'm gonna do is repeat the same, you know, mask this and invert it. And now as I paint it in, you can see it, this is really kind of what brings the contrast. If you have really light textures and really dark ones, it works really well hand in hand. So I'm just gonna paint in some kind of high or like light corners on these. Keep the contrast there, you can see this dark area on the U, that will remain. And then just get my white brush out and just paint it in some areas in the image. I'm just gonna exclude a little bit from the face here to keep some contrast. There we go, that texture's looking great as well. Now you can keep adding in as many textures as you like. This could just get more and more detailed. Uh, I think for the moment I'm just gonna add a few overlays which are just these kind of copy scan textures. So let me drag this first one in. Now with these copy scans, 
if you want them apl to apply to dark and light areas, you should follow this, which is where you set the first one to screen, which already I think it's just it's bringing through a bit of noise, which is nice. If I just hide this, you can see lightens this up a bit. So I'm going to set this to about 80. And now you should duplicate this layer and you want to set it to exclusion. Like immediately you can see it now only really applies to the light areas, but you want to bring this down to maybe about 15%. I might go a little bit higher on this so it applies a bit more. You can see nice, it textures the rest of the piece. Okay, now I'll say that with these textures, they're basically done. So now I'm just gonna move on to these kind of like small assets. You can see in this original, I've got these kind of like almost branch like grids coming through on the side, which I really like the look of. So I'm just gonna show you how I've created these. Now this is using a doodle pack, which is assets from design syndrome, which I have in this folder here, which I'm gonna drag in. So. So the original image is this kind of like really abstract grid. So I've taken the thicker aspects and put it underneath the wing, taken this small one and added it into the middle. So let me show you. I'm gonna drag this in. And now, because I just want these small areas, I'm just gonna create a very brief mask. So I'm gonna get the lasso tool and I'm just gonna drag an area that I wanna use. And this can chop off wherever it wants. It can be very brief because I'm gonna blur the edges. So here, I'm just gonna mask that. Then for the moment, it's gonna duplicate the layer to use again, and I'm gonna hide that. So I'm gonna drag this under the gradient map and under the textures, and I'm gonna also drag it underneath the angel. So now, I'm kinda of just gonna adjust this to the place I want it. So I'm gonna to have to increase it in size, which will lower it in quality a bit, but I think even on the original, it still looks quite good quality. So now I'm gonna adjust the layer mode so that it's a little bit less harsh. And you're gonna see sometimes when you're playing around with layer modes, they're not always gonna be what you kind of want it to be. So for example, with this one, you're seeing that as I scroll through, there's not really anything that's helping with this scenario. So I'm just gonna keep it on normal and I'm just gonna drop the opacity maybe to about 50 or 60 to the point where it's still shining through, but it's a little bit less harsh of a blend. So I'm just gonna increase this in size, kind of just adjust it to the point I really want it. I want it hidden behind this angel head here just for blending purposes. And now I'm gonna grab this mask and I'm gonna get a black brush. And this is where the kind of detail will be revealed and hidden. So you can see here, even just doing those two kind of simple swipes with white and black brushes, it looks as if this is just the genuine image. You can see here these lines kind of follow through, but they fade out, same kind of thing. And I'm just gonna brush this out under the angel wing because I'm gonna add in a separate layer. But yeah, if I just decrease the size here, get rid of that, kind of just go over it with some areas to kind of make it blend better. So you can see here, just added in these dark lines, maybe paint something behind the head if there is any. And there we go. You can just play around with this to get it to the point that you want it. So now with this copy I made earlier, this is going to be the bigger aspect. So if I just invert this mask with command I, I want this kind of tree, tree looking area to be under the wing. So if I just look at the reference to show you, you can see here it's kind of sticking out. So let me just, I'm just gonna move this around to the kind of placement that I want it. Now, if you can remember with the angel mask, we noticed that if I drag this under, you can see these kind of like blurry areas around the outside of the wings. Now this stops it from blending so well. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep this layer above and I'm gonna grab the angel image and I'm gonna go on select and subject. Now this is gonna create a more accurate outline of it. I'm gonna use this as a masking reference. So if I now come back onto the doodle layer and what I'm gonna do is command shift and I to invert this selection and I'm gonna hit mask. So now you can see it comes right in under the edges here of the angel and what I'm now gonna do is select this mask, get my black brush and I'm gonna hide every other area of this layer. So yeah, just simply brush it out. And now from here, I need to just adjust this opacity again Maybe take it down to 60 or 70. I'm gonna say 70 is good there. Keep going with the brush. And now I'm just gonna keep this brief for the sake of the video, but you can see this is just adjustments that are all kind of minor that you need to make if you want to. And there we go. Now this kind of like tree branch like effect is applied here as well. And I say that piece is effectively finished. You can see it's quite similar to the reference. The color isn't exactly the same, but that's simply just a gradient map change. You can also adjust the contrast with levels and curves layers, and it's all up to you. Now, YouTube, thank you so much for watching until the very end. I really hope I can be useful to you and I hope that you learned something. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because it will really help me out and I'll see you again in the next one.